the notch, ladies and gentlemen. Up close and personal. I think this is a good year. Good morning. Eight in the morning, just passed. Pretty good sleep, except that I've woken up with a kind of a sore throat. And there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong out on these big backpacks. Um, not sure what the sore throat is from. It's just uh, maybe a bit of overexertion, stress, uh, or the fact that I'm not used to living at over 6,000 feet elevation. Because, yeah, this is, uh, I think this campsite is at 2,100 meters or something like that, so. But anyway, still got a long day ahead of me. Uh, 16, 17 kilometers, something along those lines. I get up, get some energy into my system. Good old-fashioned oatmeal. You know... This is actually one of the better eating areas. Could be a few less trees, but not bad. Here we go. There is my target, my first target of the day. It's a thousand feet of elevation and about three kilometers or so to that peak. This morning, I came to the conclusion that there's no way I can do the North Boundary Trail. To go from an overnight backpacker last year to a backpacker who does 10, 12 day, you know, double digit day backpacks was a long shot. It's even a little silly. And, you know, my uh, quads are sore this morning. There's a lot of elevation change yesterday, but I mean, on Door Boundary Trail, I would have a much heavier pack. And yeah, I don't think it's smart. There's just too much that can go wrong. This is only my second time I've gone on a multi-day backpack as opposed to just overnight. And I'm having my issues on this one just like I had on my five day backpack, which uh, really damaged my summer as far as my plans. So, when I can crush out a four or five day backpack and I'm just looking for more, then I'll have to reconsider the North Boundary Trail. What do you do? Oh boy, I've hardly gone anywhere, but I already want a break slow steady uphill just enough to make you notice and my legs haven't really got the circulation going in them yet this is gonna be a very hard day a very hard way to start today I've also got to lose some clothes bugs or no bugs just gonna to have to spray myself right down okay this is still exhausting but I slowed down a lot and I was able to walk a lot longer and I think I got a lot more covered on that one so having a thing bad to say about the weather on this hike it's been fantastic sheesh beautiful couldn't be better tough going but it's happening slowly another break for me Getting so spoiled with all these views though. I have reached the big climb. Kind of like 
these little striations in the rocks. It's pretty neat stuff. I couldn't figure out why but now I think it's because the path was covered with snow so the little side trail goes underneath it because people are here doing this you know a month and a half ago or something who knows maybe someone's here bringing a June mid-May seems like that would uh, just invite invite some craziness but you never know you can see that lake down there be an interesting day hike maybe someday I can basically see from up here how to get there so I would refer back to this video some pictures I took that sort of thing and be able to figure out how to get up there go ahead and guess that is very 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 seldomly visited <sighs> oh my god it took me two hours to get up here I've added, by going down there, I've added a lot onto my trek. <sighs> Holy crap. It's time for a nice long break before I descend. I saved my coffee for probably the prettiest spot I've ever seen. What's unique about this coal is that you don't have to walk even five steps and you have a view of both sides if you do walk five steps it does get a little better but a normal pass you have to walk like 30 or 40 steps at least facing the other side cheer cheers to the best place ever to have coffee Well, that descent wasn't too bad, and I'm back on the main drag. This is awesome. I've already seen uh, five backpackers and two trail runners come ripping through here. <laughs> uh, hard as that climb was, both the notch looks three times as hard. Oh my. This is cool though. I'm working hard. But this is Skyline, and if I don't finish till 8.30 tonight, big deal. That means I've been, that's 10 and a half hours of glory. Glorious trail time, so. Yeah, this rocks. Just more amazing views. This is just whole home for Skyline. I mean, good God, good God. There's a trail runner up there. Might as well walk and talk a little bit. This is one of the easy parts of the trail. It's only going up and down a little bit, not up or down. Curator Lake looks amazing. Holy jeez. What a hue of blue that is. My legs feel better. I mean, that really was a hard way to start, you know, immediately climbing. Yeah, I think there's a lot of winds. Hope you're not getting too much of that. Immediately climbing all the way, a thousand feet. Well, now they're definitely awake. And I might as well enjoy this nice straight part before I head down to Curator Lake Campground and the Lodge. A lot of people don't go down there. I don't know how you can do a 44 kilometer trail and decide to skip 1.6 kilometers because you don't want to go and see the lodge in the campground. That's not me, that's for sure. But yeah, I'll have to go down to that and then back up and then up the notch. And wow, <laughs> the notch looks more and more intimidating the closer I get. Oh, mama. But this is the best hiking you could ever ask for in your whole life. This is just stupid. Gee, wow. Now, well, first sign of horse dung. Not sure why they're all the way up here. 
cairns, uh, anukshuks apparently is the real word for them. You know, I, they're kind of cool, I guess. They're all right. The parks, I think, have decided to stop, ask, ask people to stop making the things. But, you know, I don't see too much harm in them myself. Personally, I'm not going to add anything to them. rocks are pretty cool. No shortage of signage here. One there and there's one over here. All right, head down. Let's go check this out. Well, I certainly understand why people bypass this. It was a lot of descent coming down into here and it's going to add even more on to my journey to climb back out. But I want to see it all. I want to see all the skyline. What can I say? Every point of interest, every little attraction, every little side bit. So what's done is done. After that, it will be a rather daunting climb all the way up. I kind of like this big rock face that's right here. That's pretty cool. Well, I got no sign to show it, but this is Curator. Oh, is this a register box? Got both cables and bear boxes here. Sweet. I love registers. I love registers, they're really cool. We got two of them here. They've almost become advertisements a little bit. So I put mine there, I haven't signed it yet because I don't want to put my uh, full name on YouTube. Uh, I'm not gonna be like, oh, follow my adventures on uh, you know, Mark of the Trail or such. We got one here, we got one here. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, People on these trails don't need to follow any of these adventures. They're having their own. <laughs> Anyhow, this is uh, it's pretty cool. If I was staying here, I would sit here and read this for like two hours. Pretty cool. This is the nicest eating area on Skyline so far. You've got that huge rock face. There's Curator Mountain. And then if you just step over here a little, you've got a really big cascade waterfall up there. That's pretty cool. I don't think there's any doubt that Curator is so far the nicest campground on Skyline. There's another spot right along this nice stream and on that little pond there. And you know what? I'm not even being eaten alive right now, which is the first time. I think there's another spot up there. Yeah. Well, that's a first. Before you go into the triple banger barrel privy, you can put up a chain. Huh. Oh, what's that? Is there a random box down there? Hmm. This is the lodge. This is the tack shed with some corrals, hitching posts. Let me go ahead and guess that the horses lay waste to a lot of this. And there's the lodge itself. Pretty cool. Cool. 
There's a few different buildings up here. Oh, there's another one over there. Oh, they all look pretty new too. Well taken care of. Really neat. Well, I went inside. Had a nice chat with the girl in there. She was nice enough to let me look around. And now I start, which uh, looks to be over a thousand feet to the notch, up the notch. And it's definitely, I know it was a thousand feet this morning, but it's definitely gonna be harder going up the notch than it was going up that thing. Because it's a uh, steeper decline, incline. It's gotta start with easy attainable goals. The first one is just to get back to the campground, which is just up there. I'm gonna fill up my water, fill up my belly with water, and then next attainable goal. Well, I've been stalling a while. Oh, I hadn't even noticed this. I had to go to the bathroom second time today and a little bit distressing, the three barrel privies, it's almost full. All three barrels are like eight inches from being full. I'm gonna have to put a call in to uh, the parks, let them know because that's, oh, that could be a bad situation. This campground gets used a lot. If people are off crapping in the bush, that's yikes. 20 after two. Didn't leave anything behind. And the next attainable goal is the intersection sign, which I don't think I'll even get to without taking a break. Little pieces at a time. First break of that climb. You can see I started down there in the meadow. It's nice to see where you started. It gives you encouragement. I can't even see where I'm going yet. I have to get around this, uh, this little knoll here. It's on the other side. It's coming though. One step at a time. Well, you can't see the meadow anymore, but that was the rock face I was checking out. Back at the signs. And there's the notch. Oh. Tackle that in my next landmark, which I believe is the lake, when I feel like standing up again. I gotta say, one thing about uh, hiking wear. Uh, the first two days I wore, I actually made a mistake. I grabbed a shirt that looked like one of my expensive hiking shirts, and it's 95% cotton. Well, the bugs didn't seem to be able to get me through that thing, for the most part. This is merino wool, and especially the horse flies, they've been nailing me in the back again and again. So it's nice to have stuff that's, you know, if it gets wet, I can dry it pretty easily. At least I believe that's the case with merino wool. It keeps me cool, but man. Can't imagine what my back's gonna look like when I get home. Finally made it to these rocks. These things are pretty cool in the fact that they stick out. Or, I don't know why these are here. So it's an anomaly amongst the rest of the color. Oh baby, Curator Lake is beautiful. Very soon, I will start climbing that bad boy, the notch. Oh, right now I will just chill out and celebrate this moment. Wow. Come up a little bit more ways. I'm gonna make sure I'm good and rested. There comes the notch. It's getting better and better. That view.
getting there, getting there. I've reached the intimidating trail that I've been staring at for two days. No more surprise switchbacks. Don't have any problems taking a break in this. It's not like you're in the forest and you're just staring at a bunch of trees. Awesome sight. I don't know how these walls of snow stay, but they do. One more big push, and I'll have it. I wonder what that was, but I heard someone talking about he saw people's footprints on the glacier. People are insane. Fall in a new crevice. That's the end of you. Even with someone with you, they, they're not going to be able to help. You're 30 feet down. Nuts. The notch, ladies and gentlemen. Up close and personal. I think this is a good year. It's very questionable sometimes whether or not you can get through this. Right now it's fine. I couldn't have been any luckier with weather. It's just been amazing. Time to say goodbye to this unbelievable valley. Snowball was pretty amazing too. Man. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if I can do this with my finger properly. I believe that is Big Shovel Pass. Just a little bit over here. Oh, let's try and focus in on my finger. That doesn't work too well. There. I think that's about Big Shovel Pass. That's um, the Watchtower Coal. So that's where I was having coffee this morning. And then you can see the trail and the lake. Can't even see the lodge and stuff. That's kind of uh, on the other side here. And there's Curator Mountain, which I've seen at almost every angle. It is amazing. This whole valley has been unbelievable. But here is the notch. On a clear day, you can see Mount Robson, but today is not that day. Awesome. So I spent a while, a little while at the notch, but it's like five o'clock and I only have eight kilometers to go. <laughs> but it should be the easiest eight kilometers I've had all day. So I'm done all the huge climbs. Thank you, Lord. Be careful. The notch got really steep at the end. That is as steep as I ever want to go in a backpack. That was, uh, that was tough. I would not bring small kids on that unless you're going to carry their backpack up. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to be going down either. That's got to be a little bit dicey on your butt, basically. You know, lowering your legs down one little piece at a time. All right, I got some miles to cover. More amazing views as always. I wonder what that lake is. I think it might be Wabasso. Climbing is not over though. Not sure why it says it's over. But a little bit more. We 
get up that ridge, I think then it truly becomes skyline. That's where the name comes from. This is a pretty awesome shot right now. Oh yeah. Holy crap. Holy jeez. Must be Center Lakes. Must be where I'm going. Wow. I think I'm gonna go find myself a comfortable rock, spend a couple kilometers, and take a nice break. Well, I'm wrong. Those lakes don't seem to have any name, and the trail does not go down there. It carries on down that way, which means that this whole basin is almost never visited. I mean, even along uh, Skyline, I bet they're almost never visited, like two or three people a year. Hmm. Looks like it'd be quite easy to get into it, too. Looks can be deceiving, but you sure as heck wouldn't want to come up that valley there. That would be brutal. There's no trail, there's no nothing, so you're just hammering through the trees the whole way. That'd be too hard. Oh my god. Pretty sure I can see the trail up there. Without a doubt, that is higher than I am right now. That's just cool. More climbing. It's July 29th and you walk into the snow. You're either living your dream or you're living in a very rough part of the world. The red has got to be dust blowing off the rocks. The only thing I can think of. Makes for a really neat effect. This is not the easiest walking ever. This is, uh, well, up there looks pretty good actually, but a lot of rocks and such. Eight, eight o'clock, 8.30, that's not an exaggeration anymore. But uh, I have no regrets. Those other guys that got there hours ago, they, uh, they are fending off the mosquitoes and hiding in their tents, so. All I need to do when I get there is eat and sleep. I mean, what else is a campground for? Can't have fire, can't have beer, not in the back country, unless you're crazy enough to actually drag it out there. So yeah, time on the trail. There's this basin again. And literally, here's the trail, and there's that. It doesn't get any more skyline -y than this. I don't have to move an inch. Down there, I saw a herd of about six, seven caribou climbing up. I'm not sure why. There's no food up there. Protection from predators? Oh, makes me think there's a wolf or a bear running around down there. I haven't spotted one. And over there, I see more climbing. Yay! Yeah, I just did this. It's like, it's almost like it's old hat now. My body's like, whatever. I've been doing this all day. <laughs> Turns out that is actually a side trail going up there. I have done four side trails already that most people do. This thing. I've seen Watchtower, I've seen Curator, and people just go ripping through and don't see either of those. I am choosing not to go see that guy. Had enough amazing views already. This also looks amazing. Jesus. This should be the broken record trail. You just keep saying the same things again and again. And every time it's something different. Man, there is Tekra Lake, and the campground is just shortly after that. That there is Mount Tekra. Don't know what these two are, but they're fantastic. I mean, that is Grand Canyon stuff, right? That is just amazing. 
before you decide to just go snow bowl all the way to Tekra, I mean, look at this trail. You go up Big Shovel Pass from Snow Bowl, you go up the notch, and then your knees get to deal with all that scent. So, yeah. Same thing with Tekra to Snow Bowl. I mean, you gotta climb all this, and then you gotta go down the notch, and then down Big Shovel, which doesn't seem like that'd be that bad, but yeah. That there is Center Lake down there. This is the last thing my knees want to do right now. Too bad there's no choice in the matter. You ever get the sense you're hiking through some old set of Star Trek, the original? Oh man. Starting to get pretty tired. Back, feet. There's definitely something on top of Signal Mountain. Maybe uh, radio, TV, self, or uh, Jasper. Guess I thought that stuff had mostly been taken down. But I definitely see one big structure and a little structure up there. That tech is looking pretty cool. Man. Jeez. Mad Max? I'm expecting a damn dinosaur to pop out. <clears throat> so, yeah, I said dinosaur. I'm, I'm talking about Gorn. I think most people know that. One of the most famous scenes from the original series. Big lizard bastard that can barely move, but somehow Kirk can't kill it. Switchbacks, switchbacks, switchbacks. Getting there though. Well, it's now almost 7.30. Still coming down the switchbacks that just don't end. Trying to be careful of my knees. My back is starting to really complain now. I've definitely spent, spent myself on this one. And I'm not done yet. Yeah, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Who knows? Get there when I get there. Well, I finally got down. I was not looking forward to climbing down on the mosquitoes, and sure enough, here they are. I think I'm going to have supper. Screw it, man. It's like 7.30. I mean, or quarter to eight or some damn thing. It's going to be swarming with mosquitoes anyway when I get to camp. All I was going to do when I got to camp was eat and set up my tent. So now I'll just do one. I'll have a full belly for the last couple of kilometers, which now there's some descent left, but most of it is taken care of. So thank God I was up there. I'm damn happy to be down here now. And my knee is too. This. Look at this. I have knee brace tan lines. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, look at that. That's classic. Man, that bums me out. I'm starting to feel drops. It's all ready to start cooking too. Oh well, I dip my feet, dip my knees. Uh, I guess I'll pack up as best I can and mosey on out. Bummer. Well, I got pretty lucky. It was just a little shower. There's more in the area, so I'm gonna keep my ass going. Try to get a tent up before another shower hits. You know, I walked to the beat of my own drum and in this case, I thought it was pretty clever. Spend more time on the trail, less time in a mosquito infested campground. Well, those guys would have just sat and waited it out in their tent. Me, I'd have been trying to set my tent up in a deluge for all I know, and I would have been pretty miserable. They'd have been laughing their butts off. So, 
Yeah, I mean, oh, and that was a lightning blast. Sweet. Anyway, I had a look at that cloud before I came off the ridge there. It didn't seem that threatening. This is either a different crowd, cloud, or, uh, you know, it just built up to something. Anyhow, I better get my ass moving. Hell, I have a rain, I have a waterproof case, might as well use it. That first uh, bit of rain was, oh, set this up. Oh, and it's mostly dropped away. <laughs> first bit of rain was a warning shot, and there I was just getting pounded, and it, like literally there was hail, little bits of hail hitting the ground, like sleet or whatever you want to call it. And now it slowed down almost nothing, literally just as I was shooting. Okay. Over there, they're still getting it real good. I'm starting to wonder if I should set my tent up. You know, screw the campground. I have nowhere to put my food at all. But, uh, yeah. That's a definite storm over there. And kind of back there. That has passed over me. That over there I'm obviously not into yet, so by the time I get there, I'm hoping it's passed. I don't know here. Well, I've taken cover behind some trees and a rock against the direction the rain's coming. This is coming to me. I don't know what to do here. Should I really set up my tent, food and everything inside? Receiving a first-hand lesson on why you get your ass to the campground as fast as you can. <laughs> Hell, this might be uh, a great YouTube video if I get struck by lightning and then everyone can, you know. And then it can be shown on YouTube. Look, last moments. Stupid hiker dies. Yeah, not real sure what to do. Just for good fun too, of course, it's 8.30. Now I have a few hours to work with, but, you know, I mean, who says this is gonna stop anytime soon? Sure doesn't look like it. Shit. Okay, things are getting worse. It was, I could, oh boy. It was, I could see a few mountains over there. Now I can't see Jack. The bad storm now is over there. So I can see those mountains again. There's still a good rain shower coming in behind the storm there. But, you know, so I'm just, I'm braving the lightning, I guess. The lightning's really over there, but I'm still, you know, I don't know, I'm in the open, but you think that the lightning would hit mountains, right? Not me, damn it. This is good too. This is Tecker Lake. Uh, I should be like half hour from the campground. So in that case, I just set up my tent as fast as I can and deal with the carnage. I feel like I'm, I, I've never had this happen to me. So this is a weakness of my game. I knew it was. But I mean, you can't plan this, right? You can as best you can, but so a lot, I think everything in my bag is pretty waterproofed. Uh, everything that I want to keep um, dry anyway. I have dry socks and such. My rain jacket that I got on clearance, which is really more of a windbreaker, I'm discovering, is failing hard, horribly. So. It was on clearance, so I didn't pay a lot for it, so it was cheap. And it folded up to nothing. So that's exactly what I got, cheap and nothing. I thought it was great until actually being in the wind, the rain with it, and now my upper body is wet. My lower body is fine. If it rained hard enough and long enough, eventually my upper body would just start dripping down into my lower body, and that would get toasted too, but... The rain doesn't bother me. I can hammer through that just fine. Being cold, 
I'm, uh, I've got enough toughness with that sort of thing to deal with it, especially just getting to camp, which is only half hour away. It's the lightning that concerned me. I mean, I don't want to be out in the open in that. And I thought it was coming for me. But no, apparently it's moving that way. So, yeah. Over there, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Right? And it's moving off. So by the time I get to camp, I might be setting up just on a, a wet tent pad. That'd be the worst of it. Oh, geez. If I had known that there was like this random pad in the middle of nothing. I wonder what that's left over from. Okay, well, I have one kilometer to go. Well, now that the excitement is for the most part over, there is Tekra Lake and a fantastic shot of Mount Tekra. Wow. That's awesome. Well, I will now take a moment to count my lucky stars. I thought that storm was coming for me. I really did. I thought I was coming sweeping down this basin. But it didn't. It went that way. I ducked behind those trees and thought about setting up my tent. I don't know how that's supposed to save me from lightning anyway. That would have just given me some cover. But... Uh, and when I couldn't find a spot to set up my tent, I just decided to stay behind the trees so that I would at least cut back some of the rain I was getting and hope for the best. Well, that's never a good thing. You just sit there and hope for the best. That's not how you want to deal with uh, potentially life-threatening. I mean, if it had passed right over my head, I'm not sure what the chances are. Probably not good. I mean, I... You know, the chances of me being hit by lightning, I think, were really, really low. Very low. But still, what will I do next time? I'll have my game figured out a lot better. That's for sure. Next time around, because someday that storm won't miss me. It'll smoke me right in the face. And then what? I have to have an answer. Camp can't be too far. Ever gotten a wet willy from a spruce tree? There's a new experience for you. Uh, it is sprinkling a bit. Doesn't want to, want to give me a break. This is like the only cloud in my trajectory that's sending out rain, but it's doing it. Just a bit though. Well, I'm here. Uh, people would be shocked to see me coming out of that rainstorm, but everyone's in their tents and they don't give a shit. <laughs> what is this thing? Is this someone's rig? Oh, so much water, so much mud, so much muck. Oh. Okay, picnic tables. Someone set this up? Sure looks like it. Wow, cool. And a good water source too, from the looks of things. All right, I better not push my luck. At least not anymore that I've already pushed it all the hell today. Get my tent set up. Too sweet. Well, I got my tent up. I was going to have spaghetti and ground beef tonight, but I'm just making myself up uh, Mr. Noodles. And going to bed because it's going to be dark soon. I don't know. It's probably like 10 o'clock now. So. cold and wet. There's a swarm of mosquitoes everywhere. But uh, I'm having noodles in the shadow of Mount Tekra. Things could be worse. And everyone.